Mr. Torres, thank you for joining us. And thank I'd like you. to start on fintech. Now, you're a little bit of a trailblazer when it comes to fintech, um, looking at apps, looking at the digital economy. But your share price has been lagging somewhat, the IBEX. So do you think that investors are not valuing properly your foray into fintech? Yes, that's a great question. I think we are reaping the benefits of fintech, uh, definitely, in terms of the metrics that uh, we track on how our customers are embracing the channels. Uh, already this year, more than 50% of our customers will be digital. And that already shows in things like their profitability. They're more than twice as profitable than non-digital customers. They engage 20, 30 times more than non-digital customers. They're more satisfied NPS scores than non-digital customers. But it does take a while for that to trickle through the PL as we embark also on cost reduction efforts. We had a great year in terms of growth, yeah. core revenue growth for the third quarter. We haven't published the full year yet, uh, around 10% when uh, expenses only grew by 1.3%. So I think we're starting to see a bit of that. Uh, the cost savings, we'll see more of that uh, going forward. Digital sales, for example, we were selling digitally one out of 10 products uh, two years ago. Today it's one out of three. And that is really growing exponentially. So it has to trickle down. It has to be incorporated in the share price eventually. Right. So is there anything else that you can do to actually convince the markets of your value proposition looking at Fit Tank? Well, the markets will have to see it when the results come through. Uh, meanwhile, it's just a story that we tell. I, and, 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 and we have to uh, consider that and appreciate that. But okay. uh, we are really, really seeing uh, tremendous results as I'm sharing. And it will come through. It will come through eventually. Uh, it's also a very inertial business because it's, it's banking, it's a long book, uh, has a long tenure, things take a while to, uh, to change. So the results of 17 mm -hmm. in, a, in a large part are a result of uh, decisions of years before, right? So that's why it takes a while. For uh, that will you ever use company. Bitcoin in one of your products? Uh, well, that's a great question. Blockchain, definitely. That's a very promising technology. It will have for sure disruptive impact in what we do in many ways, not just in terms of payments, but in terms of changing, for example, the nature of uh, the authorities that provide trust, in, yeah. which are very important in financial intermediation. Bitcoin itself, it's a highly risky asset for sure. Uh, very unpredictable, not just because of the short-term volatility, but even longer term, one could think that it consolidates as a store of value because of its scarcity, but at the same time, it could evaporate given the challenges that it has. So, I would say that uh, if you invest in Bitcoin, it has to be money that uh, you can afford to lose because it's highly risky. Uh, Mr. Torres, do you worry about PSD2 and open banking? So this is a new directive coming from the European Union. Would that actually jeopardize some of your customers' data? We don't worry about it. We are actually thrilled and we view it as a great opportunity to really uh, serve our customers better. Um, the core of our strategy in terms of uh, digital transformation is not so much on the channels that I commented on or selling digitally. That's, of course, there. But it's about providing better solutions to our customers, helping them in their life or in their business. How? Make, make How? better decisions, make better, leveraging data to derive actionable insights, with, uh, also with machine learning, AI, technology. But it's really leveraging the data. So PSD2 gives us access to much more data so we can do that job better, really helping them make the right decisions for their life, for their business, based uh, on who they are and their goals in life it or in business. But isn't that what every bank is doing? What's your different proposition? Well, I don't think so. I think uh, most banks are focused on the infrastructure around money still. Uh, we're moving well beyond that and the core of our um, value proposition, it's really transforming towards uh, uh, ser serving much better decision making. Not only on the investment side and the robot advice and all of that, there's a lot of talk on that. There's a lot less on helping people decide whether they should be spending or they should be saving in their day to day in a way that is very actionable. Getting rid uh, and automating a lot of the activities that are associated with budgeting, monitoring what's happening with my bank account. Mm -hmm. We have, for example, great tools of forecasting, cash flow yeah. forecasting, predicting your movements in your bank account, etc. So how much money are you actually spending to, to develop machine learning and artificial intelligence? Well, the whole bank, what we're doing is uh, every quarter reprioritizing what we do based on impact. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to say how much money goes specifically on one category of, of work because uh, of this reprioritization that we do every three months, which is much more agile way of working, incorporating all disciplines disciplines to focus our efforts on whatever has most impact. But we're definitely uh, turning the whole organization, I would say the entire organization, to a data-driven organization. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of training mm -hmm. uh, of our analytics teams, for example, to uh, uh, learn the new tools. Are you expecting consolidation in the banking industry in Spain? Uh, well, uh, it has consolidated quite a bit through the crisis, given that uh, the savings and loans, uh, the cajas de ahorros, 
uh, were restructured and were, uh, well, we ourselves, we bought two of them, Unim and, and Caixa Catalunya, and grew significantly. We have seen the consolidation Santander Popular. So I think we're quite consolidated already. That's really not the focus of what we're doing. The focus of what we're doing is organic growth and transforming our value proposition. Mr. Torres, when you talk about uh, the Spanish, you know, the, the, the Spanish politics, Catalonia, it was quite a lot in the news. Do you think that led to a discount for Spanish banks? I think it did weigh quite a bit on sentiment, uh, the uncertainty around what might have happened there. The good news is that the state of, state of law has prevailed, the rule of law has prevailed, which is really important, is the basis of democracy. And I think what we can learn from the Catalonia situation is that uh, the state has the mechanisms to make that rule of law prevail. And I think that's tremendously important.